So the PlayStation 5 Pro was officially announced today by Mark Cerny, and it's it's actually went down a different direction than what we originally thought that this console was actually going to go. Yes, we're talking completely different price point. We're talking different just overall than what it was originally going to be. So, yeah, the PlayStation 5 Pro is not looking great from among PlayStation fans and just gamers in general. So, here is the information about the PlayStation 5 Pro. The design that was leaked about a week or two ago actually stand true. But the PlayStation 5 Pro, okay, launches on November 7th, 2024, so roughly less than two months. But look at the price point. Look at the price point at least here in the U.S. Yes, we expected among the PlayStation fans and just a lot of journalists and gamers worldwide, we were expecting a $599.99 price point. But guess what? It actually was more. Because if you look up top here, it is officially $700. And when you were honestly think about that, it's not really worth $250 or $200 from the disc version PlayStation 5 Slim. And then here's where things get even more interesting is you can look in this image, but it may very well change when the pre-orders start, which we're going to show you when the pre-orders begin. But if you look in this picture, you don't see a disk drive connected to it. So you're paying 700 bucks for a system that's maybe, just maybe, a 5% boost in graphics without a disk drive compared to paying $500 for a standard disk PlayStation 5 Slim that already looks good and plays games good as it is. I mean, really, like, when games get in a quality mode that plays the games at 4K 30 frames a second or giving you the option to play on performance mode or performance quality mode, which basically if you have a 120 hertz TV, you can play at 120 hertz mode that gives you the game still at 4K while going up to 40 frames a second, giving you that nice mixture of performance and quality mode. Like, like for... I know. I know I'm just... I know I screwed up right there. But just think of this, okay? Mark Cerny absolutely announced the system and showed games like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, The Last of Us Part Two Remastered, and Spider-Man 2 that you can now play at true 4K at the nice performance mode that lowers the quality on the base PlayStation 5. Okay, that's not what a lot of people honestly really want. Now, we're still going to get the PlayStation 5 Pro, and I know I can tell you guys are probably going to comment in the comment section, bro. Oh, you're wasting your money. Why in the world would you do that? But we got the PS4 Pro, and we're definitely going to get the PS5 Pro. Luckily enough, we can do a lease to own from Best Buy to where we don't have to pay the 700 bucks at once we get the option to pay that within a period of 90 days. So we get three months to pay for that rather than having to pay it all at once. So there is a benefit with us. And if you was wondering about that, that's what I would recommend doing if you decide to get this console from Best Buy in the future or whatever, is if you want the upgrade and you don't care or you want to be able to save money, however, and just make payments on it, you can get a lease-to-own agreement from Progressive Leasing that Best Buy lets you do with their items, and you will get 90 days to pay the price off. So, 
that's the one area that can honestly help a lot of people. But yeah, $700 compared to $500. So honestly, I think we shouldn't we shouldn't have got this console whatsoever. I mean, most people, and there's a lot of people that are talking crap about this and saying, calling Sony out for being outrageous with its price. But without it having a disk drive, if that stands true, guess what? You got to pay almost 100 more bucks. So guess what? To get a PS5 Pro with a disk drive, you're almost paying a grand for this console when you could get a better PC that's probably more powerful and more capable and such like that in terms of performance, ray tracing capabilities, and graphics and such for better and maybe, heck, not even for the same price, maybe even cheaper, for example. Like, I even though I'm going to get this, I definitely can understand people's frustration with this. But let's go ahead and show you this all this stuff. So, like we mentioned, it's coming out on November 7th of this year, so roughly less than two months. Pre-orders will begin on September 26, 2024, so roughly two Fridays from this one coming up. And then right here is the price points from all of the regions that it is going to be in. There is only one positive thing that I'm going to get this, and this is another reason what's going to make me actually want to upgrade and that is that it will include a two terabyte ssd now i think that this console would have least been better at 600 maybe at most and i know there are a lot of people are probably going to disagree with this i would say at most 650 but definitely not 700 bucks because what mark cerny showed is not a huge difference from 500 to 700 bucks there is not a clear 200 buck difference in terms of graphics and quality rather if you're getting a better 4k at smoother frame rate experience rather than get that with a ps5 pro from the baseline playstation 5 because you already got most games or at least a good handful of selection of games that already offer performance modes and most people don't even care about 4k resolution much as if they got an option to play at 1440p or 1080p resolution that's what they're going to do they're going to choose the lower frame rate or the lower hertz the freaking lower resolutions what i mean to say with the higher frame rate is what i'm trying to say that is what they're going to choose is the lower resolution but the higher frame rate option, whether if a game runs at 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second. Now, Mark Cerny did not stated if these enhanced games are going to offer a 120 FPS modes. Now, we're going to go on ahead and show you the list of the enhanced games that are going to be basically on this console so i gotta type it in real quick we're going to show you the enhanced games right here and honestly even this right here this is definitely pointless like 8k is not really i this is somewhere mark cerny also didn't even stated but here is the handful of the enhanced games that you're going to get that are going to get ps5 pro enhancements Alan Wake 2, the new Assassin's Creed Shadows that's going to come out, Demon Souls Remake, Dragon's Dogma 2, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Gran Turismo 7, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon Forbidden West, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, The Crew Motorfest, The First Descendant, and then of course, The Last of Us Part 2 Remaster. Now, there's actually one game that's not on this list that does kind of surprise us. And it's a definitely a good game that I would absolutely recommend replaying if it got the enhancement. And maybe it will probably down the road when we get more enhancement games. But the game that I'm actually shocked that they did not put on this, well, 
two games, I should however say, is Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves Collection that comes with Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy, but the number one game that I'm actually shocked that they didn't put in this list or that have enhanced for the PS5 Pro is God of War Ragnarok. That game is absolutely the best PlayStation 5 game, like first party game from Sony on this PlayStation 5 generation. Like God of War Ragnarok is the best PlayStation 5 game I have ever played. Now Horizon Forbidden West is probably our second favorite all-time PlayStation 5 game. It got the performance or the uh, enhancement for the PS5 Pro, but somehow God of War Ragnarok didn't. And that's kind of shocking, to be honest with you. But there is another p positive thing that I'm going to also give for this, and this is another area that might make it worth $700, but not really at all. At least for us, it will be, but not to a majority of people. But there is a saying or uh, something that said that 8,500 PS4 games when turning on PS5 Pro game boost mode is going to help make higher resolutions and better frame rates for those PlayStation 4 8,500 PlayStation 4 games. It's going to help with that. And with it having a 2 terabyte of storage, that is definitely one area I will give the PS5 Pro some credit. But even with that, I think the price point would have been better at 600 bucks like we were all expecting rather than 700 bucks. But then now, if you want to add a disk drive to it, you're going to be basically paying 80 bucks. So with taxes on the disk drive as well as the console, yeah, you're almost going to be paying a thousand dollars for it. We're going, we're talking like somewhere around probably 830, 840 if you add the disk drive included. Yeah, that is honestly insane for a console. And honestly, I think if it is going to be seven hundred dollars, they should include the disk drive made the digital version 600 bucks and then have a disc version for 700 that's where it would have been worth 700 at least for the most part because you got all the ps4 games that are going to get a benefit from it and you got these enhanced games as well as more to come with double to almost triple the storage than the base playstation 5 that came out at launch so there's only some positives with it and some negatives, but I am going to say that the $700 price point is definitely a little bit too far when you compare the games compared to the base PS5, and people are just not going to do it. It's not worth $200, $250 from the digital and disc version of the slim PS5, and most people are going to stick with their current ps5s that already have so but we're definitely going to get this console and luckily we're going to do a least owned agreement so that way we don't pay the full 700 dollars at once so we can make payments within a three month period but we are definitely going to do an unboxing and a full-on test out review video from comparing from our current launch model playstation 5s but yeah this was definitely so freaking shocking that this is actually a hundred bucks more than we thought. And then when you think about it, having to pay 80 bucks plus that for a disk drive and then adding the taxes all together. Yeah, you're going to be roughly paying around 830 to 840 dollars for this PlayStation 5 Pro if you get the disk drive along with it. But you may not have to if you have a PlayStation 5 Slim and decided to get a disk drive, you may be able to attach that disk drive from your PS5 Slim and add it to the Pro, but that has not been said. And like I said, Mark Cerny did not mention anything about 8K whatsoever. But I'm definitely excited to definitely get this console and to check it out and to actually play on it. And I'm very thankful that I did not play The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered on the current PlayStation 5 yet. Because now, once we get the Pro 
we're definitely going to get better ray tracing and 4k native resolution at a smooth 60 to maybe even 120 frames a second and he also did not say rather if games were going to get 120 fps modes with a 1440p or 1080p option but honestly if if we get 120 fps modes on some games that lower the resolution then i would kind of say maybe in a way the ps5 pro for 700 bucks might be worth it because you'll have that you'll have 8500 ps4 games getting taken advantage of benefit from it and then you'll have a two terabyte of storage that's the only way the only things that i will say that make the ps5 pro worth 700 bucks is if you do get a freaking is with the two terabyte storage and with all the benefits that you get with ps4 games and if the playstation 5 pro offers performance modes that let you play at either 1080p or 1440p at higher frame rates above 60 up near 120 that's the only place i will say the ps5 pro will be worth 700 bucks but honestly even with all that it would be better at 600 bucks at this point because honestly even then it's not a 200 dollars difference it's probably more like a hundred dollar difference rather than 200 upwards to 250 from the disc slim or the discless slim playstation 5 it's worth anywhere from 100 bucks at most not 200 and especially not 250 from the digital slim playstation 5 so but that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video of the playstation 5 pro announcement it is coming out november 7th in just roughly eight weeks from today or from this Friday, I should say. And right there on this screen is the enhanced games so far that they have announced that's going to get the better performance while keeping the quality mode attached to it. And it's going to include a two terabyte storage rather than a one or 825 gigabyte storage that the slim and launch model PlayStation 5s offer. So at least it is not all negative, but there is some positives with it but most gamers and including playstation fans definitely are not going to upgrade to the playstation 5 pro i would be shocked if even the playstation 5 pro passes 5 million units because uh, this is another area i forgot to mention when you look at the playstation 4 pro over the base ps4 that was a huge upgrade and guess what it added more double the storage it had slightly faster loading times and games looked way crisper and cleaner and had some performance modes attached to it and guess what it was only 400 dollars. so the playstation 5 pro they have been touting that it was it's going to have be a more powerful and a more worthy upgrade than what last gen did but that doesn't look like to be the case the playstation 4 pro was a cheaper console and had worth more of upgrading it was more worth to upgrade to it than the playstation 5 to the playstation 5 pro and i can already say or see people in the comment section i can literally see people in the comment section saying yeah the playstation 4 pro was a more worthy upgrade than this playstation 5 pro from the base playstation 5 so with all that being said Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to this channel and we'll keep you posted with more content going forward. And let us know in the comment section down below if you are going to get this PlayStation 5 Pro or if you're somebody that completely agrees that it is definitely not worth the $200 to $250 upgrade from the base slim PlayStation 5 systems. So just let us know if you're going to get it or if you think that it is not worth the upgrade because of the price point and not as much as what the playstation 4 pro from the base ps4 was so just let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below this is tech and gaming reviews hope you enjoyed this video rate 
comment, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.